Calling Paul Reed. Calling Paul Reed to we the good? American Contractor Show booth. Your seat is being warmed for you. <laughs> right next to Reggie Brock. Well, <laughs> hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Good. Good? Wonderful. Uh, my name's Nathan Thibodeau, and we're just doing a little panel here at the uh, American Contractor Show booth at RoofCon 2021. And um, I have a couple gentlemen with me, and we're going to have a little conversation about legacy. Um, it's actually in the name of this event and the whole RoofCon brand. Legacy is kind of part of what they talk about. And so we're gonna we're just gonna chat a little bit about this. Um, I'm gonna start out with one question first. So uh, introduce yourself, and then you can kind of uh, postulate on your answer to this question. Wow. Um, it's I mean uh, just to set the table a little bit. What does legacy mean to you? Like how how do you define legacy? What is that? Reggie, you're the oldest, Go so. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. Uh, Eric Oberempt. Um, DNM Roofing out of Omaha. So what does, let, let's postulate. Let's postulate. I want to postulate. That'll get you some points on Scrabble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to look it up when I go home. <laughs> um, so legacy to me, it, you know, it's, I think it's changed for me over the years because I, I don't think I actually knew what legacy was, mm. really. Um, I think it, it, in, it, back in the day, I think I just thought it was like, you know, you die and people remember you, right? Um, I think now uh, my perspective has changed to it's how many people I have the opportunity to affect and how many of those people will then affect other humans. And, and that is what I want my legacy to be. Um, you know, Hunter talks about this a lot. And I think that it really trickled down to myself. And when I went home and started implementing some of the things that I implement into my company, um, into my business, but into my family as well, and the things that we do in Roofers in Recovery, right? Yeah. Is, is how many people can we affect that are going to affect other humans? And, and to me, that's the legacy that I want to leave behind um, so that in 200 years, there's still somebody that was being affected by that line of people for yeah. the better. Yeah, that's awesome. Go ahead, Jonathan. All right, Jonathan Sherwood with uh, Roofers Helping Roofers and Surefire Seamless Systems. And uh, legacy and success, I kind of push them together. You know, I never want my legacy or my success to be measured in a paycheck or any amount of monetary compensation, but I want it to be looked at in who I was as an individual, who I was as a father, who I was as a husband, mm. who I was as a business owner and operator, the people around me, who I was in the community, and for my vision, who I was to impact the world around me, and what I was able to do for other people, and how I was able to help change their life, and how I was able to allow them to impart into my life and change mine. So I always want it to be looked at as who I was as an individual, because the reality of it is, legacy has a lot to do with this. You know, nobody reads books about people that are still alive. They read books about people that are dead because it's all about how you finish. So I'm big on the spiritual progression, being yeah. in recovery and not spiritual perfe uh, perfection. And I just want my life to be something that those look at as something that was positive and giving to others that were around me. I, I love how you say it's about how you finish. Cause I, I know legacy is like built, you know, over time, but there's just, there's some sort of concept of like redemption in that, right? Like how you finish. You know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And you always have a chance to start again if you got it. Thank God. I love that, yeah. right? Yeah. I, yeah. If I, if, I, if I was stuck with what I, with, only with what I have done to this point, I don't know how I'd feel about it. Yeah, that, I call that, that grace. That's great. That's awesome. Man. We know I've had a lot of that, huh, Eric? Huh. <laughs> so I'm Reggie Brock. I'm with Beacon. Uh, and this is an interesting topic to me. And I'm probably between these two guys in terms of my definition of that, because I think my legacy is being lived now, but will be determined at a different point, right? And so we all have expiration dates. And when that time comes, what matters to me is what people say and remember and the influence that I had on them. And so I think if I'm not happy with my legacy that I'm living now, I have still the ability to change it, right? And that's what's important to me is, I mean, 10 years ago, if I would have died 10 years ago, what my wife, who's standing right here with us today, 
what my wife would have said about me then is a whole lot different, thankfully, than what it is today. So I think what's important to me about legacy is it's living and breathing. It's continuous. It's something that we live out and then one day people talk about, right? And so I think people just need to prioritize what's important to them and that's what they pursue. And so for me, my legacy is far more influenced by the choices I make reflected upon, and as Jonathan meant it, my wife and my son. Um, and then those folks that come around me and the impact that I can have and share upon their lives. And so to me, legacy is living, right? It, it, it's breathing, it's by my choice. And if I don't like what relationship I have with my wife now, as long as I have breath in me, it can change by the choices that I make. And so um, legacy to me will be determined by others after I'm gone, but it's affected only by what I do today. I can change it or I can continue it based upon the choices that I make. And speak for yourself, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I, Jonathan and I decided that we're the Highlander, so we're never dying anyway. Yes, right. right? So you have to cut our head off. Correct. You have to cut our head off. So that's I'm not going anywhere. Reggie, like, I'm going to live forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless somebody has that sword. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, and uh, and Reggie's Reggie's lovely wife is here too. Yeah. She's gonna keep him honest. So yeah. uh, if he you, if he says something you think it's a little off, look at her. She'll be shaking her head <laughs> yeah. yes or no. Right. So um, a question that occurs to me, and I, I don't know why this is. I think one of the just for me personally, this thing comes up in almost every single aspect of my own personal analysis and the analysis I do of other people. Where do you guys think ego? comes into play with regards to your legacy i think you got to be real fucking careful about it because there's a there, there's such a fine line between ego and humility and how you balance those two you know because we all want to do well maybe not all of us but like we we want to do better and we want to help people and we want to do all those things that are going to build our legacy at the same time, while we're doing those things, it raises our status, it raises our exposure, and all of those things that come with that. And then it is real easy for our ego to get so big that we forget about why we're doing what we're doing. That is so true. And so, yeah. like, there, there's a real yeah. fine line and a real fine balance that we have to find with that so that we remember where we, A, came from, where we are, and where we're going. Yeah, and why why we started doing what and we were why doing we started in the doing in the first place? Yeah, right. Like, it's like it seems so noble when nobody knows about it. Yep. And then when somebody does know about it, it seems noble to them. But you know, yeah. you know, if now it's about the attention and not the original. It gets real. It gets real awkward when you're you're standing in a coffee shop somewhere at a conference like this, and somebody walks up and goes, "Hey," and knows your name, and I'm like, "Am I right. supposed to?" And you feel like weird you know it's awkward and uncomfortable a little bit and then it kind of brings you back down and like hey hold on why am i doing what i'm doing why am i here and like you got to really reframe it all the time and make sure that you're paying that you're being intentional i know that's our favorite word it's intentional right Intention. yeah. but we have to be intentional about it that's really good so to me ego is that driver in us that pursues the appetites we really have right and so i i talk to guys constantly and they're I, they're like they, they give you the impression that everything they're doing, like in work or whatever element of life that they're in, that they're doing it for somebody else. But if you really cut it back, you really see that it's something they're trying to accomplish for themselves. And so I talk to a lot of guys who may be struggling in relationships. And the fact of the matter is they say what they're doing is for their family when in reality it's not. And if you just dissect it down, they start seeing that as I have done it before. So ego is something that you have to be really, really careful to keep in check or in balance or it ruins everything else around you. It may satisfy you, may take care of your wants and your needs, but those that you find important around you can suffer if that ego gets way out of control. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. And unfortunately, uh, I have lost everything before at one yeah. point in my life from ego and pride. Uh, you know, pride comes before the fall, and I even had somebody tell that to me right before it happened. And then later on in life, uh, I've had to deal with it a couple other times. I know I'm the only man in here that's ever dealt with his pride or his ego before. Yeah. But there's been some times where I begin to think that I'm doing it in my own strength. 
that this is me. And the reality of it is, one, I have failed my way to the success that you see now. And two, it's by the grace of God that I'm even yeah. able to do what it is that I'm even doing. Right. And sometimes my carnal mind will get in there and I'll be like, oh, look what John's doing. And I'll have some accountability partners in my life that'll, that are able to say no to me and are able to say things to me that others wouldn't say and kind of put me back in check. And then also my own reflection on myself and my time with the Lord to understand that it's not me. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate just to be here. And if they were to take everything away from me that I have right now, just my salvation for what I've done is more than enough. Yeah. Is more than enough. There's one other thing I'd like to add to that real quick, though, is that, you know, there's nobody that is, you know, like 100% selfless, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with it's, it, there's no reason that selfish needs to be a bad word because everything that we do, we want ourselves to be happy. That's selfish, right? It's about us. It's sure. about being selfish. But if we're being selfish to be happy while helping other people and being selfless at the same time, I think that that's something that people need to recognize is, is okay. Like you don't need to feel guilty about something like that. I struggle with that a lot. And I had to have a long conversation with somebody that I work with on a daily basis on this kind of stuff because I was like, man, I'm a selfish prick. And he's like, no, not really. Like, you know, like there's certain things maybe that you are, but it doesn't mean that you're bad. Right. Right. It's how are you directing those things and what are you doing with them? There's, so there's a, it's the reason why I think that question actually, there's some complication to it is if you, there is, there's a component of your ego that desires a good legacy. Yep. Right. There's a component. So ego, it's not, it's not egoless, right? <laughs> right? Because I want, I want to leave a good legacy. Why? Well, because part of my ego wants to leave something good behind or be known for something good. Right. So that's not without ego. But then Reggie made this point that I found interesting though, is, is what, what do you have appetites for? Like, what is it that feeds your ego? Because that's the thing you will, that's the thing you'll ultimately, like, ultimately default to. So, um, as it pertains to, like, working on your legacy, um, what role do you guys believe that accountability plays? Yeah. And, and how are you implementing that? Like, what, what are some of the things that you do in, in seeking the legacy you desire and implementation of accountability towards it? I think what John said is keeping people around you that will hold you accountable and aren't afraid to call you on your bullshit. <laughs> I, 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 I make sure that I have a circle around me that isn't, isn't afraid to say no that isn't afraid to say you're out of line, right? Um, I think there's something very, very powerful about that. And the people that you see that get lost are the people that just have yes men around them all the time. And I think that, I, I think that that's a huge thing that everybody needs to, um, to really think about. So he hit the nail on the head and since I already told on myself earlier and said I struggled with it, I'll just tell you exactly what I did. And this was just recently, last couple of weeks. So those that know me know I have, I'm in recovery. I had a crazy past. I was involved in all kinds of things, struggled with all kinds of things. And uh, during that, in order to get to a place where I could be in society and operate like a normal human being, I had to do a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy. So I still see that, that, that therapist. And he had me get a no man. He said he wanted me to find somebody because the God of my understanding, I'm a Christian. So he wanted to find somebody that was a Christian. That was just for me and somebody that was a businessman that was been in business longer than me and had achieved more than me and as somebody that was not afraid when I laid everything out, hey, these are the investments I'm thinking about. These are all the different opportunities that I've had to go and speak at different places. These are the different bu uh, building opportunities because I was running myself ragged, flying all over, all over the nation and doing everything. And he said, because you don't need to do everything. So you need to go to a man that has no problem telling you no, that is like-minded, that's achieved more than you. And that's what I have just personally done. And it kind of sucks, you know, because, you know, sometimes my ego gets in there and it's like hooray for me and yeah. you and so like you know I get excited I'm like okay I've been working hard to get to the place that I'm at and now I got, I got a guy that says 
cut that shit out <laughs> or you're going to be a bad guy. So I had to do that because I, I was struggling with it. And it's, and it's been helping me quite a bit. And, uh, you know, that's just my experience and yeah. strength and hope on that one. That's great. So there's really two things that have affected my life when I realized that my legacy needed to change, especially with the ones I love the most. And the first was stop lying to myself. That's a hard thing to do. We can fool a lot of people, but you can't really fool yourself. And so every time I see a destiny change for me, it always starts with an inward look, always. So I can have great people around me that are trying to improve me, but if I've got junk in me that needs to come out of me before I can improve, I need to discover that so that I can actually improve, right? The second thing is, it's really hard to feel safe around people when you talk transparent, authentic, and you're just real. Because we've been burnt and hurt, and we also think that we have got to present ourselves as so successful or nobody will like us. We've got to be influencers or nobody will pay attention to us. And the fact of the matter is, that's not true. And so I think being able to have, like Eric and, and, and um, Jonathan both said, have somebody who can speak truth into your life and you're safe, you feel safe with them to talk and be honest is critical. Inward look first and then finding people around you who will speak the truth to you and are not afraid of the outcome or they don't have some type of monetary tie or some other reason that, that would preclude them from really being honest with you. You don't find that, you're never going to be accountable and your destiny and legacy will never change. Solid. Wow. Don't you love hearing Reggie speak? I, I love do. hearing Reggie. I get, to, I get to listen to him every Wednesday. So if you're out there, there is a group on Facebook called Contractor Fellowship. And if you love listening to Reggie and you like these con, con conversations, you should you should check it out. I just call him and say, could you preach for about could five minutes? Just, could you just minutes. preach in my ear? I just ear. need some preaching for about five minutes. Wait, just, That's what Reggie's TikTok. Wanna, just do TikTok, oh, TikTok, yeah. TikTok speeches. Yeah. Got it. TikTok right. speeches. That's so, our new play. Um, <laughs> you guys doing good on time? We, we saw it here still? I got, I got nothing but you, brother. <laughs> I love it. All right. So, question. What do you think, you're, if you were to die right now, what do you think your legacy would be if it ended right now? And how far is it from the legacy you want it to be when you do end? Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and go, even though I don't like my answer. But, <laughs> well, and you're the, we're the Highlander. So. It, well, first of all, I'm a Highlander, yeah, so, so we're not I, I got yeah, plenty yeah. of time to figure this out. Right. But, exactly. Okay, so... For me, unfortunately, I think if it was to happen this moment, they would say that I was a good man that had a, a, a big heart and wanted to do a lot, but that I was consumed with working. Because one of the things that I've been working on is the work-life balance and having more time living my life. Recently, somebody said something to me a few weeks ago that really stuck with me, and they said, Jonathan, I sure hope you get what it is that you're looking for, and the rest of your life doesn't pass you by because you're grinding so hard working. Oh, that's good. That is good. And that really stuck to me. It, it broke me down a little bit, and that's why I got the, yet the no man that I've been working with and doing the different things. And the thing that I wanted to, to, to people to say is that Jonathan fulfilled the call, the plan, the purpose, and the destiny on his life. And I know for a fact that it's not my career. Yeah. I know for a fact that it's, for me personally, it's allowing my life and my story to radically change lives for the glory of the gospel. Yeah. And I feel that it's time for me to set down some of the work stuff and pursue the call of God on my life in order for that to happen. So rigorous honesty. They would be saying I was consumed with work, but I was a good man with a lot of potential. And that's not how I want this thing to end, but that's me just being up front with you. Wow. Wow. That's a heck of a warning you got. Go ahead. Well, I used to, I, I used to, and I'll tell y'all, I chose to be cremated. Now, how does that have to do with the legacy? Well, I was afraid that if I got laid out somewhere, people came, nobody would visit my funeral, right? That's how far off and how abusive I was to people. I just thought. Is that a real thought? It was a real like thought. Like a real thought. It was a real thought. Okay. Like, if I get cremated, they don't, Connie doesn't have to go through the embarrassment of having a funeral and nobody's showing up. Or at least the people, if you get cremated, they might want to come watch. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe they could view the fire, not the funeral, right? Maybe that was it. But 
you know, like right now, I, I feel a little bit better about my life. And the reason is I've made changes that have helped her, helped my son and others around me, right? And so I've stopped being that maddening personality that makes relationships just explode, not to the good, right? And so I think now my legacy looks different to my wife than it did 10 years ago. That's what I pursue is how are things different tomorrow than they were today that enhancement occurs to anybody I come in contact with. My hope is that when I die and someone comes up to anyone who knew me and says, what is it about Reggie that mattered? It was, you would think when I was around him and left, my life was better. That's kind of what I want. I want to be able to add depth and width to people's life and most importantly, to my wife and sons. And if I accomplish that, and then Eric can say after I'm gone, dude, I don't really know what he did, but when I was around him, I felt better after we were done, and I felt inspired, or I felt my passion increased, or Jonathan said, didn't know this guy, but now he said some things that really caused another gear in my life. I don't know what more I can ask for in life. That's where I want my legacy to end. When it does, I don't know. And just for the record, I already say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was a really big pile of shit for a really long time. And I hurt a lot of people, what? including myself, but you know, all the people around me for a long, 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 long time. Um, I hurt, I caused chaos. Um, I yeah. talked about that a lot the other day, was that um, I, absolutely thrived in chaos that is my natural state yeah my natural state is chaos and i know how to operate in that space and there's something that really stuck with me from this conference um you know if there's one thing that i heard when uh, ed Milet was speaking it was chasing that person was chasing that person that you want to be yeah and you know, if you believe in heaven, hell, whatever, and and if you get to wherever you know your end is, um, if you recognize that person, you did it. And if you and and the the, the saddest thing is going to be is if you get there and you don't recognize that person that you were supposed to be. And so, I didn't answer your question. I'm going to. Sorry, um, but if if I died today. Again, I, I still think that I'm very much a work in progress. I'm very much a work in progress. I think that people, my wife, my kid, would say that, um, you know, I was getting there. I was right. getting there. Um, I am definitely not there yet, but I think that I am I'm very intentional about what I'm doing every day to be better and to make sure that every life that is a part of my life that I'm trying to positively influence if I can. And then if I get another 20 years, 30 years, whatever it is, that those people will show up yeah. and they will have the, the exact same thing that you said that when I was around him, Right, I, I I walked away feeling better than when I started, and and if I can if I can have something like that, like I'll feel like a win. The money, the whatever, like who gives a shit? Yeah. Like that that'll come when you do the right thing every day. Yeah. Um, I used to only care about money, money, booze, drugs, women, whatever. Like that was all I gave a shit about, and it's amazing how your life changes when you change those priorities your life changes, and then all the other shit comes yeah. because you're doing the right thing, right? The money comes, the people come, the right people come into your life, yeah. and the wrong people get out of your life. Yeah. And that's an amazing thing. And if I go, when I go, if I go, because I'm a Highlander, but when I go, I hope that that circle and those people that, that, are, uh, that are around me then are the ones <laughs> that, that I help grow and they help me grow. And that would be an amazing legacy for so me. So do, do y'all feel like this? I get tired of thinking, I've thought this so many times in my life, and I'm tired of it, and that's this. I wished I would have told them when I could. Yeah. I wished I could have showed them when I could. Now they're not here, I can't anymore. I, that thought drives me daily. I do not want to, look, I don't care what anybody in this room says, we all have an expiration date. It's going to come to an end. And what I don't want 
to come to an end too quick is unresolved issues with people in particular I care about. There's a guy in this hall today, and I'm just going to be candid with you since we're being transparent and honest, that I have ought against, that I have fought for three years, and he has done absolutely nothing to me. But the perception is there's conflict. And it's maybe just in my mind, but I can't leave this hall today without dealing with that. That's how real this is to me. If I want something to change and live with no regrets, dadgum, you better do something about it before it is too late. I don't want to deal and live with that any more in my life. Resolve it, restore it, and move on. That's a path that I pursue, try to every day of my life. I'll go That's with awesome. you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you can you can tag team that one in case it does come to blows. In case it gets ugly, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> it might. Yeah. I, I'm I'm terrified. If I was to die today, this mustache should be far too much a part of my legacy. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of the guy off of Chips. Oh. <laughs> I do have a motorcycle. There you go. Uh, we know what you're going to be for Halloween. That's <laughs> so I think uh, last uh, last question here, um, and. You guys aren't going to like it. I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, in what way are you, are you, and in what way are you taking responsibility for helping others build their legacy? And are you working with somebody specifically right now? Take that, John. So... I don't like your question, <laughs> but I'm going to answer it. I, don't, I really haven't liked a lot of them because of just where I'm at right now. Because I would ask myself stuff that would have made me sound better. You were <laughs> so, supposed you were, you weren't supposed to. Hey, just an FYI, you weren't supposed to be here, but you know what? You were supposed to be here. I think, yeah. I think right? you, were, yeah. you were supposed to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So because yeah, so. my head's definitely spinning right now yep. in a good way. So on this one, fortunately, there 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 is a young man in my life that I'm helping him with his 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 legacy right now and. Uh, you know, the things that come the best tend to be the things that we don't know are coming sometime, like this, me sitting here, because I had no idea I was going to be sitting here. I walked through the front door. John Dye grabbed me, said he needed to go to my booth. I was like, I was at your booth yesterday. <laughs> and then Eric's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> and he's like, this is, this is where they were talking about legacy. Like, you know, that's not your thing. <laughs> like, that's pretty much the look he gave me, right? Okay, so, so <laughs> I didn't plan on being here. But with that question being, I got a little off track, with that question being asked, so, I had an individual that I'm working with uh, that comes from a similar past uh, that I do. And unfortunately, they even had a family member that murdered somebody yesterday. That's what we woke up to. Uh, and uh, just shortly before that, they had another family member that was shot in the face, and they had a, another family member that had died, and we've been, we've been dealing with these things together, and he's trying to remove himself from that lifestyle. and. You know, I went to a CEO summit, and I was invited to this CEO summit. I, I really didn't know why, and I was sitting with these group of pastors, and these pastors said to me, they said, there's a, they, we, they didn't know me. They said, there's this young man in your life, and, and, and we just want to tell you that God told us, do not give up on him yeah. under any circumstance. And I'm wow. like, what in the world are these guys talking about? Well, I came home, and this individual and I, uh, we worked together and he tried to fist fight me on the highway. <laughs> so that was an awkward situation, Little right? Yeah. And uh, most people would probably fire you for that. And uh, we got out of the car and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the people are honking on us on the highway and I'm dodging out of the way of the punches and I'm thinking, man, if this kid hits me. <laughs> and uh, I, got him, I got him to chill out, right? And then I got back in my car and I'm driving off and I'm like, fuck this guy, whatever, I'm going to get rid of him, I need this and this and this back, and, and, and it's over. And then it came out and it hit me out of nowhere, and like, that's you. That's you. Right. And what about the people that loved you through where you're at and how you got to where you're at today? And then I knew what they were talking about. Yep. And so I ended up calling that individual back, and I said, I'm not going to give up on you no matter what happens. And I've watched, because of loving in that moment, what has happened and their life starting to turn around and instead of being a, stat a statistic and like everybody else in the neighborhood that they were brought up in 
they're doing something with their life and they're pursuing the dream on their life. And in that, they're doing more for me than I could ever do for him. Yeah. Ever do for him. So in me trying to help them with their legacy, they're actually helping me get to where I am. 100%. Go. So that's all I got good. on that. That's awesome. real good. Go ahead, Eric. That's fantastic. Um, so I like to think that everybody that I interact with, like especially at work and, you know, people that, you know, work work around me that hopefully I'm doing that, you know, on a daily basis. Um, but I think the gift that guys like John and I are given in recovery give us the opportunity to do that a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I know the first shit eight years of my sobriety I didn't do any of that because I didn't feel like I was qualified I was I did not feel like I had I mean the audacity to think that I had my shit together <laughs> enough to be able to help somebody else right get the get out like no way right um, over the last you know handful of years I have I had to intentionally change that mindset and be like nah man like that's why you're here. You know, that's why you're here is to be able to help those people that came from exactly where you came from to, to the point of your story, right? I mean, the, your story is exactly that. You're helping somebody that went through the exact same shit that you did, and that's what we get to do in recovery. So it's literally not just one. It's not one guy, right? Like, everybody that comes up to me and asks me for help, you know, in recovery and says, hey, will you, will you sponsor me? Right? Like that is an overwhelming feeling of responsibility. And it's because because a lot of them fail. A lot of them fail, right? They don't all win. And we take that personally when they fail. We take it personally like, what else could I have done? What could, I, I should have been able to keep them sober. I should have been able to do this, do that. Um, but that has to be the most rewarding thing that I've ever been able to do is to is to I hate using the word mentor it just it makes you sound like a hundred years old right but but when you get that opportunity to work with somebody and 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 do that kind of work you are building their legacy they're gonna get to you know go however many years before they expire and and have that same conversation with somebody else and change more lives that's the legacy and Thank God for thank God for recovery because without that I wouldn't I wouldn't have any of that. Yeah, through such a such a massive crisis to your own life, not only did you find a gift to help others, but a responsibility as well. Yeah, yeah the responsibility yeah. part's a little daunting sometimes. Uh, no doubt. Yeah, and it's easier to feel responsible when you understand that the steps you've walked in your life were not for you alone. That's a thought, that's something that again that resonates through me daily and that is because it's easy to look back and have regret and you know the pain is you know the thought of the past just drives us crazy but if once we realize that we have been places so that we can help others who are there it changes perspective right and so for me I am not doing that enough Nathan kind of blindsided me because we talked about that this morning um, but that's, that's a, that, that is a heartfelt uh, goal of mine is to create safety with people to where they can actually be honest and reveal themselves in a way that will heal themselves. <laughs> they reveal themselves so that they can heal themselves. And it's really, really difficult to go through life by yourself. And I'm going to tell you something, and I'll close with this, or shut up. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> you being perfect is not the pursuit in life you need. Because you're not going to be. I'm not going to be. And so some of the voicing that we hear around us in our industry that's really touting the pursuit of our inner goals and what we want and promotion and influence and all that kind of stuff really doesn't deal with that deep down poison in you that needs to be removed out of you. And so when you can find guys like this, and it's just not about recovery from alcohol and drugs. There are a lot of folks who struggle with a lot of pain that looks different than that, but comes from the same place. 
and knowing that you've got someone who can walk with you, talk with you, and has lived there literally creates more openness and willingness on your part to move in that direction yourself. So put down all the fake and phony and facades and just be what? Be authentic, authentic or get the fuck out. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm going to say what everybody else is thinking right now, but Reggie Brock just read my mail. <laughs> so I know everybody else is thinking it. You don't have to say it. <laughs> and, and it starts because I read my mail daily, and I usually don't like what's in it. Yeah. And so, but what I'm not going to do ever again is repress it, push it down, and think it's going to go away because yep. it doesn't. What you're dealing with now, you lay your head down at night, all the lights are off, TV's off, nobody's talking to you, the phone's put down, and you start hearing voices running inside of you that are saying something ain't right. I use this statement all the time, and I believe it. How can we have so much and yet feel so empty? And it's because there are internal triggers and issues in us that are, have been left alone so long, and they're dying to get out and to grow you to become and reach your full potential. And so with that, I'll be quiet. But listen, you're not alone. Find people around you who can help you. But it starts with being honest with yourself. Most non-fluffy, no bullshit panel I've ever been on. Yeah. This, uh, this has been a real sweet time, guys. Yeah, there, there's found, nothing really left to say after we found an interesting little uh, <laughs> yeah. We found an interesting little done. bubble. Hey, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Thank Love you, you guys. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you.